Hello and welcome to this video on Conversations on Consciousness. My name is Ladrin and today I'm going to be speaking to you about sleep. That's right, sleep. A thing that we all do every day, I hope. <laughs> but it's not just about sleep, but it's the quality of sleep and how to get better sleep and how to get deeper sleep and everything. So there are a few stages. One of them is stress, bodily, mental, physical st stress basically that if our, if our body is under a lot of stress, if we are completely tired from the day of work and then we are easy to get to sleep because we're just so knackered, we just, we just fall asleep. As soon as our eyes close and we're just laying down, we find ourselves, oh, oh God, did I, did I fall asleep for a little while? Yeah, you did because your body needed it. Your body's saying, okay, I'm gonna switch off now because we're in over mode, you know, working overtime on this body. So we need to like, relax. So <clears throat> there are other things that come into play, stress which I'm talking about which is physical stress but mental stress as well. Sometimes you're so mentally stressed out that you cannot sleep, that something is on your mind. Now your mind and your body as we know are two separate things, it's your spiritual like consciousness, it's your earthly body and sometimes when they are not in sync very well and there is a disturbance in stress and too much awakeness and too many thoughts, the monkey mind spinning around everything, it's gonna keep you awake. However, from my own experience of doing shift work with work, as well as my own uh, personal stuff with events and everything, that sometimes there's not enough time in the day to do the things that we need, and so we're stressing about and doing the things that we have to in order to get better sleep. So there's a few things I wanna, wanna talk about. Just from my own experience, I'm, I'm sure I've missed a ton of things in the link below. You will find a link to a better sleep series, uh, which is by Roxiva. Um, but this is from my own personal hands-on experience. Okay, so number one is light. So dealing with light machines and understanding about light and frequencies, that light actually isn't very healthy for us in some way, especially blue light. Now I'm in a studio at the moment, this is how I'm recording and speaking this to you guys, so I can give things clearly and just talk and have some nice visuals behind me. <laughs> but however, in here I have like a few lights in here which are LED, they're not natural, you know, um, and they have a slight blue peak to it and there's certain lights that I need in order to achieve you know, the uh, the picture and the image I'm trying to do. However, if you are constantly looking at, at lights just before you sleep, especially the worst thing is screens. So t television screens, um, tablet screens, uh, smartphone screens. And this can keep your your brain more active because of the, the, the wavelengths of light, of the, the blue peak as we call it. So in your devices, um, I suggest you download um, on, on your laptops, which you can find something called f.lux, f.lux. It's a great software. It takes out a lot of the blue peak on screens and has more of a reddish hue to it. it takes a little while to get used to, but then you don't notice it. It's actually better for your eyes. Uh, on, on, on phones, uh, there's an app called Twilight uh, for Android. Uh, Mac, I don't know because uh, I don't have any Mac um, devices. But there are f.lux and Twilight. Those are two great apps you can use, which takes out the blue peak, has a bit more of a reddish tinge to it. And if you don't have access to these, um, which I'm sure you can, because these, these apps are free, or you like watching TV, like switch, turn down the lights a little bit, turn down the brightness of your TV set. And just before you sleep, you probably find this actually helps you sleep better. Um, I find that even re wearing red glasses, I've got these like sunglasses which are just red. They don't block out the sun, they just give turn everything red, completely red. Now when I'm doing like really long shifts or long days and I have to get up early the next day and I want to sleep, then I start pulling the lights down, I put on red glasses and then like the last sort of half an hour before I sleep, I don't watch things on my phone. I listen to stuff like some podcasts. Um, I like things on like Star Wars and um, some other like uh, fantasy sort of things I like watching or something spiritual or just a bit of music. So I, I put them on and if I have to brush my teeth and see a little bit, then I've got that. But the best is actually no light at all. 
So in your surroundings, in your bedroom, in your wherever you're living, before you are sleeping, the best is no light. So if you can just shut everything off and even the small light from outside of windows, like if you have like a, a street lamp just outside your bedroom window, that's not good either. It can keep you very much awake. So with that, I use a blindfold. I don't have one at hand with me here. However, I have a blindfold which actually blocks out all light. You can find many great blindfolds out there or make your own or even use something like a small towel. Uh, which I've used in the past when I haven't had uh, a blindfold with me. And that's just covering completely your eyes, it's blocking everything out. And I find it actually really comforting that I'm, I feel like I'm raptured in this, just this warmth and my face and, and everything. I find that really helps to black out all light. So sleep, you know, we need sleep to recharge our bodies. Um, however, like I find that also, sound can be a problem. If you are living in a, a, a flat with surrounding neighbours or people are making noises or you live with a floor where people are parting down outside or whatever, you're just trying to sleep and you have like shift work that you work in the next day, then I suggest having, wearing headphones and an eye mask. And the headphones you can put on uh, binaural beats, uh, brainwave, uh, synchronized music which helps you to sleep deep. Now there are great companies out there such as Hemisync which is one of the, the first pioneering of this of this um, genre, this category. And it's short, Hemisync is short for hemispheric synchronization. It's to do with the hemispheres of your brain, your left and right side of your brain synchronized. So they use something called binaural beats which you may have heard before. And this can be as simple as putting, say, uh, 100 hertz in the left ear and 100, like 7.5 in the right ear. And your brain rec recognizes a difference of 100 hertz and 107.5 to be the differentio between two hemispheres of 7.5 hertz. Now, 7.5 hertz is like a deep theta state. But however you need for sleep, you need delta. So there are four main brainwave states that people know of, alpha, beta, theta, and delta. The alpha and beta are more active awake and to do with like, um, you know, more awake states of consciousness. And theta is to do with like deep meditation. And then delta is much deeper. It's, it's the brainwave like pulses. So at the moment you should be around alpha or beta, sometimes switching into theta if you're like visualizing or you're just listening to this. Um, and at sleep, uh, you're going into delta, which is more slower brain waves. So at the moment, beta is around 13 to 30 hertz, depending on which sort of uh, resources that you look at. And then in meditation, it drops down like, you know, 9 hertz down to 7 hertz, 5 hertz and fluctuates. And sleep seems to be much more slower brain pulses. So you imagine your brain is like active at the moment, more your your neurons and your brain waves are firing much more faster to be more active in your thinking. And then when you're asleep, they're much, much more slower. So you can imagine this slower rhythm of a brainwave pulses. Now there are other brainwave states as well, such as uh, gamma, hypergamma, lambda, epsilon. These are higher and lower brainwave states. But let's just focus on, on theta and delta at the moment. So if you can get hold of... Um, Delta tones or theta tones for meditation or sleep that can really help you to um, entrain your brain, to train your brain, to synchronize your brain hemispheres to be in a certain brainwave frequency to allow you to sleep much deeper and be ready for sleep. So um, with that, there are companies such as Hemisync, like I said, uh, short for hemispheric synchronization. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not pronouncing it right. And there are other places uh, and other companies like BrainSync, uh, UltraSync, um, and a few others, um, Kelly Howes, BrainSync. Uh, so HemiSync was patented by Robert Monroe with a few other like um, audio engineers, which they came up with this technology. And since then, there's been an array of different other binaural beat companies, and you can even make your own with other softwares that are out there. So do your research. Do not download off of YouTube. I know you're watching this off YouTube right now, but do not download um, audio brainwave binaural beat files off of YouTube because 
usually the um, the files are usually com compressed and you don't get the, the proper synchronization of left and right which you need to balance. So don't think, okay, I'm just gonna search it on the internet and find it. The best thing is isochronic tones. Now isochronic tones don't need the left and right. You can be deaf in one ear and you can still benefit from this. Um, and also chronic tones are like a, a constant beat, like doom, 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 continu continuously. This is what we find in, say, like um, shamanic drumming. So when there's a lot of like, I'm not gonna like clap too loud, but imagine like just in training, getting deeper. After after a few minutes, it can be continuous and repetitive. That's it's in training your brainwave, your rhythm. And this is why that drumming is really helpful. Uh, sound is very helpful to keep us like to dance you know we want to get up and dance and when it's much more slower slower <laughs> when it's much more slower and a lower pace then it starts to calm us down and to relax us and it can be almost it's like hearing that top the the, the clock in the room when you hear it tick like and it can be almost like quite sort of like a bit boring you know it's like, oh, I'm hearing this clock tick. It can be a bit annoying in a way, but it's kind of like you're aware it's there. Then after a while, you don't notice it. You can be asleep in the room and you don't even notice that the clock is there ticking because perhaps maybe it entrained you in some way. So that's an idea. I mean, uh, standard light bulbs in rooms keep us awake because there are a certain frequency, like 40 or 50 hertz, for example. Uh, 60 hertz beyond you don't see the flicker that's why when you record off of like um, your phone or video, old video cameras that used to get on TV screens like this of the screen like being you, you could see it changing being refreshed the same on computer screens um, because the the, the 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 camera will be uh, capturing um, when when it's flickering you might even be recording you might see a lamp or a light bulb flickering in some way because it is it is pulsing we just don't notice it so it may seem like it's on like continuous however it is in some way flashing very very fast and that is a, like a, a brainwave rhythm that's keeping us awake so just be aware this is one big thing light plays a really big role in keeping us very much awake um, so, and the other thing, of course, is stress. If you're thinking about something too much, you can be too much awake. So um, try and relax before you sleep, try and shut off, do some meditation if you like, a bit of breath work and detach from the day. Turn off your devices, just read something if you want. Best thing is to be in complete darkness. And then after a certain while of being in the dark, then you start to train your body, your mind, your brain to be ready for sleep. So things such as caffeine before going to sleep aren't very good, as you know. I don't drink caffeine a few hours before going to bed, at least. Um, if you're a caffeine addict, then try and sustain from caffeine completely. Only have it in the mornings. There is so much to cover about sleep and how to get like much more deeper sleep. <clears throat> However, these things I've learned about light, how light affects us in our sleep, is very, very important. So... <clears throat> With that, um, those who live in different parts of the world, in Europe, um, especially like the Northern Hemispheres, um, Norway, Scotland, the light isn't so much during the winter time. So if you are going to sleep and it's dark, if you're waking up and it's dark, it can make our body very tired because although we've slept, we haven't told our body that we're ready to, to wake up. Now, I wake up naturally with the sunrise, like it's, I don't know, I feel it in the room, I like, I can can see it, you know, with my eyes closed in a way, like, you know, just that little bit of light just helps me to wake up and I feel so much more better, much more awake, happier, more alert. Then when I go to sleep very, very late and I wake up very early and it's still dark, I just start, oh, I don't wanna get up, I have to because I have to work or I have to do something. <clears throat> and so it's completely dark for a few hours in England. You know, if you get up at four or five o'clock in the morning in winter, like at the moment it's winter, it's still dark. You know, it takes a long while for my body to wake up. It's not natural to me. So I perform much better when the sun rises. And then the opposite is the time in the summer where it's light for like 
16 hours of the day and we hardly get much uh, darkness. So trying to get some sleep when it's light can be quite difficult, you know, because it gets dark at like half 10 or 11 at the peak of the summer. And if you have to be, or if I have to be in bed at like eight or nine o'clock to be at work for, you know, four or five, six o'clock in the morning, then I need to get some sleep. So these are the things that I've learned is that having blackout blinds in your room helps completely get rid of any light in the room completely. You need fresh air, but such things like sad boxes are a really good idea. So um, if you can black out your room, have a blackout blind, wear an eye mask, um, and then of course you're gonna move around a bit in your, in your sleep and you find that the eye mask has come off. It happens to me most mornings, most nights. Um, using a sad light or even a light on a timer which can come on like just a few minutes before your alarm, you might find this actually helps you become a bit more awake, a little bit more synchronized to the light and the darkness patterns. So light is a form of frequency that is always around us. We're always being entrained by it from, from screens, from television screens, devices, and even the light in rooms. We're always throughout the day being entrained. Now, one final thing to point on is about deep sleep um, is that with when you start to go into darkness, it takes a few minutes, a handful of minutes, 20 minutes or so for your body to relax, your mind to relax, and to go into a much deeper sleep. Now, when you close your eyes, as soon as you close your eyes and be in some darkness, then you start to produce um, melatonin. And melatonin is a natural substance in our brain, in our body, that is produced to help us sleep. And we need serotonin in the day to produce melatonin. Now, there are other things such as darkness retreats where you could be in complete darkness for about four or five days or a week. And the first few days, are, I haven't done this, I've been wanting to do this for a while. I want to do it this winter, but it's been quite cold and having put the heating on, I needed to see and food and everything. So I'm going to wait until it's a much warmer climate and be in a room where there's airflow, but also darkness. I really want to experience this for at least three or four days. And they say when you do it, you have no sense of time. You don't know if it's day or night. Um, you don't see any light. You just have a small bit of food. And supposedly, I'm not sure if this is true. I want to find some more information about it. But supposedly that your brain stops to produce so much melatonin, but starts to, to produce DMT, dimethyltryptamine. So dimethyltryptamine is a substance in your brain, the, the psychoactive um, psychedelic compound, which is released just before you die and also to, in small amounts to help you to produce more uh, psychedelic like visions and dreams and, and you know, interesting experiences. So they say that this, this chemical is released in your brain in complete darkness. And why that is, I don't know, maybe it's because your body has been tricked that it's going through like a death, you know, in a way, you're not dying, but it's mimicking the effects of being completely just shut off. And so, I don't know, that, that's, that's a theory of mine, like, okay, maybe that's what's happening, your body's pre preparing and why. Maybe we're meant to be in darkness and sometimes to hibernate, to go within ourselves to meditate. So darkness retreats, look them up. Very interesting, I haven't done it, so I can't say so much. I can only say from other people's experiences that what they've experienced is quite phenomenal and they've seen visions and guides and seen colors and lights in the room, spirit lights and you can't, you know, everything. So yeah, for sleep, they say that you do sleep a little bit, but you're also quite awake and you go through fluctuations on, on all sorts of feelings and it's, it's yeah, I feel it's a really good experience. I'm yet to experience this and I'm really looking forward to it. So yeah, light is what creates, you know, life. You know, it's from the sun, it's a frequency. Um, from the sun, 122.22 hertz, I think it is. Something like that, it's quite high frequency. It's what we need to keep feeling refreshed. And natural light is the best. So for those light machine users out there, that if you are creating programs, and you're inside all day like like a, a, a crazy scientist like you know typing all these different frequencies 
um, it's, it's important to get outside and get some natural light. Natural light is is the best. However, we cannot control the sunlight. We can control a light machine, which can give us some psychedelic sort of meditative conscious experiences because we are programming the light to produce something. So I hope this has helped you. I hope this has helped spread some light on your um, sleep understanding of light and how it affects us. Um, try and use what I said, experience it. Uh, also, another thing which I forgot to mention is yellow glasses. Now, yellow glasses is something I use uh, throughout the day if I'm driving, especially cloudy, helps to just make everything a bit more beautiful and bright. And at night, helps to reduce glare and also to relax the eyes a little bit better. There are so many LED, LED lights from street lamps and cars now that it can keep us our eyes very like drained and we're not blinking. Blinking is a very important thing that we need to do to refresh our eyes. So try and get yourself hold of some uh, yellow glasses. They're not sunglasses. They just help get rid of the blue peak, the blue uh, spectrum from, from LED lighting and helps to relax your eyes. So give it a go. I hope these tips have helped you in some way and, and I say spread a bit of light into your life and help you a bit more happier. I've personally noticed a huge difference following these steps. Thank you for watching and I'll speak to you soon. For now, goodbye.